Here we have a simple GraphQL yoga server. We have a type for our domain and we have an array of domains here that match all of the different fields in our type. We then have a function get domain by ID. It accepts an ID and using that ID, it can then search and find through our array of different domains, the exact domain that matches that of the ID that we passed in. For the purposes of this video, we're also logging to the console, the actual ID that we're calling inside of this function. Further on down, we have our type definitions for our GraphQL server using the SDL approach and a second to fetch all of our domains. We then have our GraphQL type for domain. Then further on down, we have our resolvers. We have our query resolvers that return just the ID inside of an object. Then we have the root resolver for domain where we are creating resolvers for each of the fields inside of our type. But like we can see here inside of the name resolver, we are fetching ID from the parent or the root object. We are then calling get domain by ID, passing along ID, and then we are destruction from that response, the name and return it for this field. We do the same for expires and owner. The reason why I'm doing this is that it clearly demonstrates the need for something like data loader to batch requests. As you can imagine, when we call all of these individual fields, we're calling out to get domain by ID. If we go up inside of here, we should see when we run this query inside of our console, we see this printed for every single field that runs this function. So if we start our server and we head on over to graphical and we make a query to fetch all of our domains, here we'll fetch the ID and the name. If we now go back to the terminal, we can see here that we called the get domain by ID for the ID one and two. If we go back now and we add an additional field such as expires and we run this query, if we go back, we can see now that we ran the get domains for ID twice and we ran it again twice for the second ID. If we go back and we now add the owner field and run that query, we can now see that we ran that same function three times for each domain in the array. If this database was larger, all of these queries would multiply and we would be making far too many requests to our database and potentially bring it down. So instead, we can use a library called data loader. I will use npm install and we'll install data loader. Once that's installed, I'll go ahead and import data loader. Further on down, I have some code that is commented out. This is creating a function that allows me to pass multiple IDs as an array of strings that returns a promise that is the object domain as an array. We can see here that it iterates through all of our different IDs that we pass in to the arguments and it calls the function get domain by ID. So we should be able to provide an array of different IDs and call this function for each one of them. And we should see log to the console how many times this was ran. Further on down inside of my server, I'm actually going to pass some context to the GraphQL server. I'm going to pass a custom domain loader and I will instantiate data loader and will pass get domain by IDs. Data loader expects a batch function that accepts an array of IDs. Then instead of my root resolver for domain, from the third context argument, I can destructure domain loader. Now, if we take the domain loader and we replace get domain by ID with await domain loader.load and we apply the same logic to the other root resolvers. If we now start the server and we head on over to graphical, if we run the same query as we did before, you can see now we get the same results. But if we go back to the terminal, and we can see here that we only called get domain by ID for each of the individual domains in our array. We didn't call it three times like we did before for the different fields that we fetched. This is what we call batching with data loader. It doesn't replace the need for caching. So you'll need to introduce and adopt that throughout your API if you want to cache any of your responses. But what this does is give it an intuitive way to call loaders to fetch data across multiple areas of your application. And as long as the ID matches, you will make that request only once and it will return the data to each of those load functions. Here I have a, another example that uses users that has a best friend ID. This best friend ID is a string and it will match the ID of the user. So it references itself and here we have a array of different users and we can see for all of our different users that we have best friend IDs. Then if we go down, similar to what we did for fetching domains by ID, we now fetch a user by ID. Then instead of our schema, we have a query to fetch all users. And then instead of our resolver, we return the array of users. Then for the root resolver user, for the best friend, we get the best friend ID. And then we call get user by ID, passing that best friend ID. Now, if we start our GraphQL yoga server and we head on over to graphical, we can see here when we make the request that we're fetching an array of users. And for each user, we want to fetch the best friend. And for that best friend, we want to fetch their best friend. And for their best friend, we want to fetch their best friend. 
And as you go through and add and request multiple users from your database and their best friends, you can see that this is going to get overly complex and send unnecessary requests to your database. We can see here that we're making multiple requests to fetch users that we've already fetched previously. And now if we introduce this idea of a user loader, we can simply remove our request to get user by ID and instead make a request to load from the user loader. Now, when we go back and we rerun this query, we can see inside the terminal that we only made a request to fetch the user by ID two and three once. It's important to note that for each request, we want to instantiate a new data loader for our users. If you're using something like GraphQL Yoga, you can pass a function to context and in the arguments has the request. So here we can just structure the request and we can return a function that returns an object with our user loader. Then inside of here, we can just structure from the request things like the authorization token. Then this authorization is something that you could pass along to get users by ID. Then where we pass that token, we could update the actual get users by ID to take in that authorization token. Then inside of here, you can do whatever checks you need to do and return the applicable user records. If users could only fetch the best friends of certain users that they were friends with, it's inside of here that you could use that authorization token to return all of the different users. So your array could contain one user, then it could return null, or it could contain another user too, and so on. There's a few other things that Data Loader can do, and we'll explore that in a future video.